that we also have people with us who are in the comfort of their own place and the safety of their own place. So welcome, everyone. It is just so good to be back together and see each other. So this is a place, a wonderful special place, of caring and respect for each other. We help each other to grow spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and we listen to each other. It's a place of real caring and respect. Theologically, we're a big tent. You can come here if you have been raised Christian or Jewish or Muslim or agnostic or atheist, and we listen to each other and respect each other's different points of view. We are so glad that you are here with us in whatever means you are here, and we hope you will join us again. Welcome. Welcome to worship. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my great joy to serve as the minister with this congregation, with members and friends and children of all ages and at all stages of life. Part of how we recognize and value um, our community and how it's been established and how it continues is to recognize those who have gone before. The lands that this building resides on were the home of the Peoria people. They made their home here long before we arrived. Our mission and ministry is supported by the generous financial support of members and friends. We aren't yet uh, passing the plate. We're trying not to, you know, clump around each other. Because I know you're eager to make the donations into the plate. So, you know, we got to control that. But the collection plates are at the entrance to the sanctuary. You are welcome also to make an online donation through the website and at the link provided. Now, this Sunday, uh, this Sunday is our formal in-gathering. It is the official start to the church year. And as such, we celebrate with story, song, and ritual. And part of that ritual is the water communion, where we use the metaphor, metaphorical and actual water to physically and spiritually reconnect. Today, we have asked you to share what is in your mind and on your heart. Uh, some of you submitted notes uh, before the service, but if you're in person in the sanctuary uh, or in the building, you should have a couple of blue post-its um, with your order of service. And if you'd like to write a word or a phrase, include your name uh, if you wish as well. We'll be receiving those at the end of the service um, as part of the communion. And now, uh, I want to offer, we have a special announcement from Amanda Franklin. Hi.
Hi, good morning. Most of you know me. My name is Amanda Franklin. Um, and this morning I'm here to talk to you about Covenant Circles. Uh, as you know, I, or as you may have heard, <laughs> um, I've been a member of the church for about seven years, and it wasn't until a couple of years after we joined that I joined a Covenant Circle. Um, and it was there that I really made connections with people that I probably would have never made anywhere else um, through our church, and I felt like this was home. It was through those Covenant Circles. And if you've ever heard me talk about Covenant Circles, you know that I say that. But really, in the last year, those covenant circles, my covenant circle has become something more. Um, I never thought I would be a stay-at-home mom who was homeschooling with this full-time job. Um, and while we made the best of it, it was still so nice to have that safe place to go to, whether it was in the basement or in my um, craft room with the door shut and staring at the faces of my friends, my church friends, um, twice a month. Sometimes we did it more. Uh, but it was wonderful to have those connections. We looked different, but it felt the same. Uh, we were able to talk about the hard parts and the easy parts and the fun and the new silver linings that we were trying to find. Um, we utilized Zoom, as we all had to, but we were able to share pictures of our first cars um, and do some really fun things that I don't think we could have ever done if we were in person. This year, we hope to have a parents group um, it will be 100% virtual. It will be in the late evening, hopefully after bedtimes or as kids are winding down on their own. Um, so hopefully we'll have enough interest for a parent's covenant circle. It connects you to those who are like-minded, that are members of our church, friends of our church, in a way that I don't think any of our other activities can. Um, it's opening season, opening season, Jiminy. <laughs> um, Sign-ups are open right now. There are forms out front. There was a, a form attached in the builder. Um, Joyce Rosenberger is the head of small group ministry, uh, so please see her if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have about joining a covenant circle, what it means, or the parents group that we hope to start this year. Um, so I hope that you will take some time to consider, even if it's by Zoom, the importance of that connection and what Covenant Circles and small group ministry can do for you as we transition to whatever is next as we go through this. So thank you. From the Reverend Karen Johnston. This is a call to flow as river flows, effortless and mighty, 
to find hope in each other, to inspire each other, to never go it alone. This is a call to new beginnings, to new creations, to new chances to do good deeds, to forgive and seek forgiveness, and to be written in the book of life. This is a call to offer solace when it is needed, and where and when to find joy whenever it offers itself up in the now of every moment. This is a call to find your heart's most precious intention, letting it have its wild way with you. This is a call to come back, to come home, to come to your senses, to come to yourself, to come to your whole and holy self. This is a call for body and soul, for each and every to be healed by flowing waters, by mighty waters, by sacred waters that show us the way. Come, let us worship together. Our chalice lighting for today was created for Reverend Jennifer's installation last March. Peoria UU member Cinda Thompson drew from our mission and covenant when she created it. It is called A New Faith Rising. Our chalice curves, catches the spark and bursts into a flame beckoning across space and through darkness to light a way for each seeker on a journey unfolding into pain and into beauty. Reach forward, clasp open hands, form a circle, celebrate our infinite forms and spirits. Join our beloved community. Kindle the courage needed to create real change. Come, help heal the world. Our next hymn is Blue Boat Home by the Unitarian Versalist musician Peter Mayer.
This morning, as we combine the waters of our separate lives into a moving stream of community, I'd like to share with you a story from the Sufi tradition. It's called The Little Stream Called to the Sea, and it goes like this. Once there was a little stream that dreamed of flowing to the sea. The stream started in an aquifer, a huge pool of water underground. But the call of the ocean was so strong that the stream pushed its way through nooks and cracks up through the earth until it burst forth into the air and began a journey toward the sea. As its waters bubbled to the surface, they ran down a hill, carving the stream bed into the earth. Sometimes the stream babbled as it traveled, sometimes it gurgled, sometimes it roared. At times, the stream traveled alone. Its waters were so clear, you could see the pebbles that lined its bed. At other times, the stream ran through great lakes or tumbled over a cliff or joined other streams to form a river and then split again to travel alone. But always, always the little stream yearned to flow to the sea. Sometimes the stream would run fast and deep, eager to reach the sea. Fish swam in its waters and it carried them swiftly on its journey. Sometimes this dream would grow wide and slow, and it would carry boats on its back as it continued its journey. But always, always, the little stream yearned to flow to the sea. One day, just as the call of the ocean seemed to grow a bit stronger, the stream found itself growing sluggish. Its waters grew thick with mud, until sadly it pooled into a brackish mud hole right on the edge of a desert. Woe is me, thought the little stream. How will I ever get to the sea? It tried going around the desert, but the desert was too wide. It tried going under the desert, but the desert was too deep. Still, the little stream heard the call of the ocean and yearned to flow to the sea. Now, after what seemed like a very long time, as the stream just pooled there in the sun, it began to hear a second voice. I can take you to the sea, little stream, whispered the wind. Come with me. I'll carry you to the ocean shore. How could you do that, scoffed the stream. You're only made of air. I can carry you on a breeze, whispered the wind. But you must be very brave, for you must let yourself go and change. I've changed many times, said the stream. But this will be different, said the wind. The little stream paused, but deep within, the stream still yearned for the sea. The stream let go. And the wind picked it up, particle by particle. At first, the stream was scared. It felt lost. It wasn't a stream any longer, but was turned sort of inside out and become moisture swirling in the air. The view was like nothing the little stream had ever seen before. Not only was the whole world laid out below it, but it was surrounded by sparkling jewels. Then what had been the stream realized that all of those sparkling jewels were parts of itself. Molecules of water, droplets of moisture, sparkling in the light. What had been the stream realized it was truly beautiful on the inside, every single bit. Next, the stream turned moisture, saw that it was not alone, for the wind had whispered to other streams and ponds, and even the morning dew upon the oasis. All had turned into moisture, and all their parts were also sparkling in the sun. Together, they were even more beautiful. 
for the sunlight had changed them all into the colors of the rainbow. Then the little stream turned rainbow, felt itself falling and falling and falling. All the other droplets were falling too until plop, 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 plop. All the droplets ran together into a mighty river which rushed down the mountainside along the coastal plain and into the sea where the waves pushed it back and pulled it forward and the currents carried it far out into the pulsing depths. And the little stream was content. But I understand that every now and then, the wind would breeze by, whispering to the currents in the sea, come with me, come with me. And that the moisture would rise up into the wind and be carried away to start all over again. Just like the little stream, if we trust in each other and in ourselves and help carry each other, we'll reach the other side of the desert, wiser, stronger, and more whole, both as individuals and a community and always flowing forward to new beginnings. So be it. Come into this space, way into your seat. Breathe into this body, the very body that will be you. For better and for worse, in sickness and in health, to death do you part. Come into this day, raise your gaze into this light, this one steadfast sun who watches over all growing beings, even you, even now. Come into this heart and break into the boundlessness of wild beauty, no beginning or ending in you, but flowing through like white water, reaching toward all that ever was and ever shall be. This is the time for sharing the joys and sorrows that are among us. 
And this week, we offer good wishes to Catherine Burton. Uh, she continues to recover from surgery, but she also uh, searches for suitable lodging in order to spend six months in Mexico and six months in central Illinois. We offer our good wishes as she pursues this search. I know there are far more joys and sorrows, names and milestones that are among us than, than we can possibly cover within the space of a single hour, a single moment. But let us honor that, all that is in within us. Let us take one more moment for all that lives in our hearts, for all that remains unspoken. Let us take one more moment in silence. Amen. I invite you into a time of reflection. The prayer I want to offer comes to us from the Reverend Jude Geiger um, from our sibling congregation in Huntington, New York. Congregations all across the country are sharing this prayer as well as we recall the terrible loss of life and subsequent destruction from September 11, 2001. Those who observe the Jewish calendar are preparing to begin the new year with humility and a wish to do better. We can offer that with that spirit, being kindred in that spirit as well. Spirit of life, God of many names, source of love, Help us to enter the new year with a spirit of renewal. Open our hearts to the possibility of abundance. Open our hands to do the work of what the year brings to us with meaning and integrity, with care and love. Prepare our lips to speak with truth and care. All these blessings will be needed to prepare the road ahead for justice and healing we pause once more, as some do every day, to remember the lives lost 20 years ago on a Tuesday morning. We mourn the friends we can no longer greet. We hold in our hearts the families that are missing a, a parent or a sister, a son. We acknowledge that a new generation has seen its innocence of worldly anguish pass away knowing that each of us must wrestle with memory and loss in our own ways, we pray for the strength of heart to face these difficulties with integrity. That we know deep down that a warm community sits all around us, ready to stretch out so that the way ahead is a little less cumbersome, less solitary, less strange. May our memory and our grief alter, not alter our prayerful convictions for a world of hope and love. And may the harm done that fateful day not deter our spirits one inch from a path of building the world we dream about. May we not learn to become creatures of reaction, recreating harm in the world around us for the harm done in our cities and in our plains. This morning, we keep close to our hearts the families and friends we once knew. We rejoice in those stories where a caregiver, a sibling, a child arrived home late at night to a welcoming, grateful family. 
We also rejoice for the congregations spread throughout the country who have learned to break bread and share in worship across religious aisles, who appreciate the shared messages of love and healing that are taught by Christians, by Jews, and by Muslims, and by religions in the world throughout. It is in this spirit that the world may know peace. Shalom, salam, and amen. Our next song is The Water is Wide. It is a Scottish folk song arranged by Mark Hayes. And it happens to be the first new song from the choir under the direction of Dave Breeden. They rehearsed and recorded this piece last Sunday afternoon. As fitting with our theme of tears of joy and tears of sorrow, the voice of this song struggles with deep feelings of love and how to endure when plans and hopes and da are dashed and what was solid falls away. Also, during this piece, we'll be collecting the post-its with your notes of tears of joy and tears of sorrow on them. Um, take this moment now to write a note if you would like to contribute something. And now we begin with Water is Wide. Like the morning dew, it 
The water we pour and the words we share are a mixed experience this year. There is so much that is sweet and sad. Today is the formal start of our new year, and, and I have loved this time in all of my years as being a Unitarian Universalist. It is, it is joy. People are returning from the shift in time and schedule and place that many of us know over the summer in various ways. People are getting ready for the newness of fall and worship, and we're wondering who will join us this year, who will come through the door again. And, and there is even, as the, as the cool of the morning kind of begins to show up again, there is even that anticipating autumn with all of its richness. I mean, we already know when the trunk or treat is happening for Halloween. I mean, really. One season is accomplished and a new one can unfold and we greet this moment with story, with song, with in-gathering. And this year is mixed. The images around water are truly complicated and complex in this moment. We have so many storms and flooding, so much flooding in recent weeks that for some of our beloved and certainly our friends and neighbors and other people in the country, is. It's reigniting previous trauma for those along the Gulf and in the Atlantic. I recently took note uh, that in Houston, for example, they have a chart, they have kind of a flooding severity chart numbered uh, in kind of oranges and reds and so on. And how they indicate that is they refer to this year's flooding, that past year's flooding, these streets, these neighborhoods, this severity, because they don't forget. And it helps to remember how bad something was so they know how to prepare for the next. There's also so much grief, and I will say shame, at what we have done to the earth and the climate that is reacting in ways that are more water and less water all over the place. And the new complexity, kind of every year as we come to the water communion, there's a new complexity that I try to keep in mind and learn more every year, uh, that, that water is not necessarily safe or welcoming or positive uh, for some folks such as those who are of African descent, who have experienced systemic historic oppression of being excluded from pools, being excluded from water, and because they are, have been excluded, they might not swim as well, and thus the water is a risk. And that's just one tip of that information. And of course, this weekend marks the 20th anniversary of the loss of life on September 11th. Because along with, and along with our collective sorrow is recognizing how a million and a half or so Afghan people have died since then because of that war. 
This year, our theme is tears of sorrow and tears of joy in recognition of all that lives in us and around us. I think the first act, the first act is one of gentleness. The softness that can be the softness of water. The loving kindness that we can begin from and can always return to. The loving kindness that we can offer ourselves and offer to the tended, tender, wounded state of our minds and bodies and hearts that we can also offer as a base of where to move in the world, offer to our neighbors and to the world as well. We must decide how to conduct our singular and precious lives, even when so much is out of our control. And every year, I I wonder if I need to tell this short bit of the history, where the water communion comes from. And every year, there seems to be another reason to do so. So let me offer where this comes from. That the origin of the water communion is a story itself of finding strength in complicated places. Over 40 years ago, in 1980, Unitarian Universalist women came together at the Women in Religion Conference in Michigan. And they wanted to have a voice when women who were so long being kept from being accepted as leaders in our own churches. They sought to create a ritual where all could contribute. And the participants brought water to that gathering from every corner of the country. It was as a symbol of life within each of us, no matter our gender, our age, our color, our orientation, our ability, our disability, all could come and bring. And the women left that conference and brought back that ritual of the water ceremony to the congregations at their homes. And not only did they return with that water, they also came back with a deeper charge to Unitarian Universalism to include all women and female perspectives in our understanding of scripture and who can lead the church. I'm still kind of sitting here like, this is in my lifetime that this was a question and a need. And 40 years later, we are still talking about women's bodies, are we not? Amen? And so clearly we needed to have told that story again. I know for some of us who have been in the fight for such a long time, it's like, can't, we, can't I not fight this one? Can I not? Can we have the next generation fight? I'm like, I'm here. We're here. I promise. This generation is here. And, and we need all of us to be in it together, too. Within the embrace of our beloved community, All of us are here living into our commitment to embrace freedom and love and welcome to all, to grow who we are within and to bring that growth out into the world. We can do our part to mend what has been torn on this earth. And in our shared values, in our in our collective effort in Unitarian Universalism, that larger faith, that big tent that Nancy mentioned at the start of the service, we choose to gather. We freely choose to be together because we know the larger work calls us on. We give our values form and life. We know that we are greater when we are together than we when we are apart, and we know We are continuing to be adapting into what togetherness means in all the forms now. But we also know, no matter where we are, that we are part of a larger system and cycle of life. And so in this moment, we honor that larger presence and that in gathering, 
with our water communion. So instead of people coming forward, um, instead of people coming forward in this time, and also to allow for folks who, who were online to participate ahead of time, uh, we asked you to write a word or phrase of what is in your mind or on your heart. And we're going to be getting ready to share those now as well. And I want to offer, um, as we begin the water communion itself, that we have an opening reading be read by Amy Pop. Water makes its mark. A glass of tea sweats a circle of droplets on an old table. Drying, they pull dirt and stain from the wood, leaving a ring. Water makes its mark. Deep in the earth, in a cave, a drop falls each minute. Where it lands, a great pillar of white rock has grown up. Water makes its mark. On the surface above, a stream burbles and flows, carving out potholes in the granite of its bed. Water makes its mark. Along a highway cut, a geologist points out the layers of tan slate, each penny-thin sheet, the memory of a torrential rainstorm eons ago. Water makes its mark. In its network of veins, the blood, salty like the seawater from which we sprung, flows on in cycles, giving life. Water makes its mark. The dark clouds pass on, yielding no rain. Crops wither, and drought comes. Famine, migration, violence, and death soon follow. Water makes its mark. A space probe turns its camera toward whence it came, imaging one solitary pixel of light, its color the pale blue of oceans. Water makes its mark. A solitary tear slides down the cheek, a tear of abiding joy, a tear of unending grief. We see and share the depth of feeling at its true core. Water makes its mark. So Amy and I will alternate reading the notes that you have shared, and we'll add them to our stream of life, leading down into our common bowl, and we'll be pouring, um, adding them into our common bowl through water every, um, after everyone is read. And I'll begin with the, one, the notes that were sent to us before the service. From Carol Manny, I will get my life back this year. I can't control how another person sees me. Vision can be clouded by so many other things. I will stop trying to convince. I know who I am and I will be myself. It's the only thing you can control. Next we have a message from Mary Mahalan Kafar, who says, the water reminds me of cleansing of the body and soul. Next is from Lovina Farden, and she says, It is sweet to know love and pain and hope, the beauty life has to offer, life forgives, like the rivers it will bend and find a new path. And from Terry and Tom Malone, that water represents cherished time on Lake Michigan with our children and grandchildren, life-giving water that makes all things grow in gardens, forests, and swelling seas, tears of sadness as our country remains largely divided, distrustful, and contentious. Those are the ones who were sent ahead.
many of those today are anonymous, so I will not have an attributed source. There are different times. These are different times. Isolation, uncertainty, and concern about family and friends is always present. Hope and pray for better times. Is there one behind? More of our family is vaccinated from Jay. <laughs> Joy, friends, and a beloved community. I'm thankful for the chance to find truth in all stories with, all, with my church. Yay for stories. Tears of joy for family gatherings and loved ones. Tears of sorrow. For all those who lost loved ones to COVID-19. It feels right to be here. Tears of sorrow for division in our country over COVID. Joy, the of love, in my life, the abundance, there we go, I have it now, the abundance of love in my life, especially hmm, the sorrow, the loss of my grandson, Alex, at age 14, I miss him. So much. Joy, the beauty of nature, reconnecting with brothers, new friends. It's from Rebecca Byron. The sorrow, loss of young grandson to COVID, to cancer, leaving two sons and friends. From Donna Dickey, it is good to be back inside and see old friends. This is representing water from the Lake of the Ozarks. Too many losses and sustained hope. Joy, gratitude for water which quenches thirst which cleanses. Joy, I get to play with my friends. And joy for family gatherings. Concern and love for our teenage nephew. The music of the lapping waves feeds my soul.
joys for change, silver linings, new adventures, I think. There you go. sorrows for all we have lost. From Phyllis Close, from my water, for my water, from my water barrel bought at the UU rummage sale for $10. That's a deal. And I want to offer, I want to offer a few, a few blank ones as we're recognizing all that is with us, all that is around us, all the joys and sorrows that we share. That there is space for more that flows into the body of life. This is simply the beginning of this year. And if you'd like to add more there, we'll be bringing this out to the patio. Um, and there are more sticky notes. The ribbons will be out there. And you can add your own further along as well. And then we'll pour the water from our common bowl into, uh, into the land, return it to the cycles of the earth and sky um, after we've, people have had a chance to fill them out during coffee hour. But now. I want to offer a blessing on all that has been gathered, on all that has been received. May the waters and the words gathered here remind us of what each of us brings to this community, the waters that have nourished us before we were even born, continue to give us sustenance and life for our journeys. The words, the messages that are spoken in mind and heart from one to another, from one to many. These two give us sustenance and energy for the journey. We are so blessed. We are so receiving of the gift of life in this moment, along with all the creatures of the earth, along with all that is. May we gratefully continue to be in this flow of life and to swim to the other side. Our closing hymn is from our excellent choir. It was created for my installation. So let us hear the closing hymn, Life Calls Us On.
We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. As drops of rain find each other and build to become a track, a rivulet, a stream, a river, a sea, so we are drawn together. So we are fortunate to find each other, so we are bound together. We are bound on the shared passage toward an unknown ocean and eternity. Having renewed our coming together, having refreshed our connection with each other and with the stream of life, let us go forth, bringing our message of life and hope and love into our terribly thirsty world. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. Thank you. 